Let's take a look at a new GMRS radio from Radiodity. It's the GM30+. Plus. <music> Oddity's new GM30 Plus carries the name of the popular GM30 GMRS radio, but is a very different radio. Among the improvements are more channels, more receive bands, a bigger battery, GPS, and a color screen. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel where we do reviews and how to's on a variety of primarily radio related topics. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. As is sometimes the case here, Radiodity provided the radio for feedback and review. They don't tell me what to say or even see the video before it's published. I try not to give too many opinions, but rather show the radio how it works and what it does so that you can make your own mind up as to whether this solves your communications need. I'll have my Radiodity discount code in the video description. Use that to save a few bucks. To start with, let's go through a couple of the key features and specifications. First, the radio is a multi-band radio that receives eight different frequency bands. These include the AM airband for aviation transmissions, broadcast FM, the usual VHF frequencies, the 1.25 meter ham band frequencies, and frequencies in the 350 to 390 megahertz band. It has the typical UHF frequencies, NOAA weather band, and it will receive and transmit, of course, in the GMRS assigned channels. Next, the radio has 1,000 channel memory capacity. Other than the 30 standard GMRS channels, any channel can be programmed as a DIY channel. To help make managing channels easier, the channels can be assigned to any of 10 channel zones or banks. This means you can program it in merge channels, marine channels, and even railroad channels, and place them in zones or banks that make sense to you. In what has become almost a requirement for small HTs these days, the battery is USB-C rechargeable, and speaking of the battery, it's a very respectable 2500 milliamp hour capacity. And last in this abbreviated list is the very cool GPS location functions. These allow you to see where you are and when working with others in the same GPS data sharing function, you can see the location of others in your group. Let's take a look at what comes in the box. So here's the box that the GM30 Plus comes in. This is the dual pack, so the box is a little, a little bit bigger. So let's take a look at what we're going to find inside. The first thing that's different is that we've got a pair of antennas. Uh, we've got this short one. Again, it's a little thin and flexible, so it's not like the stiff rubber duckies of the past. And then we've got this like 15 and a half or 16 inch antenna that's a little longer. You can expect maybe a little bit better range uh, with the downside of it being it's bigger and so it can catch on things. So those are the two antennas that come. This antenna does not come in the single pack, however. To charge the radio it comes with a Class C charging cable, A side here, C side there, and then with a wall wart with a USB A connector here on this side and there is no charge cradle that comes with these. These are class C only kind of charge which personally I like better anyway. Next we'll look at a couple of other little accessories. We got the ever popular wrist strap, the, the belt clip that has screws that are in the back of the radio and then here's one of those little wired push to talk ear pieces that also come. In the dual pack you'll get two of every one of these. In the single pack you'll just get one. Last in the dual pack is the programming cable. If you've got several of these radios, you probably have several programming cables already, but it comes along in the dual pack set. Now it comes with a pretty good owner's manual. Uh, in many ways, it's similar to the other Radiodity owner's manuals, uh, but one thing is of note is that near the back, it's got a section on how the GPS function works, how to send 
your data, how to receive data from another member of your group. And it covers an explanation that covers several pages. And, and that's new. I've had a couple of these radios that have this GPS data, and I frankly have never figured out how to use them. But this is a really good set of instructions here on that particular function, you know, along with the usual things you would expect in a manual, like using menu shortcuts and so now let's take a look at the radio itself. Uh, I've got the screen protector on. Let's pull that little baby off. Ooh, there we go. Got that off of there. So the radio is pretty hefty. It's not heavy, but it's firm. And then on the front, we see we've got a large screen, the microphone right there. The uh, speaker is underneath the keypad. It's got a menu and exit button. What makes this a little different from some of the other radios, it's got a P1 and a P2 button on the front, plus a rocker panel to go up and down also on the front. Then it also has here the letters on the keys instead of the various menu functions associated with this. And we're going to see why that is here in just a minute. Uh, you can hit the scan, you can lock. And, and do the other things that you're used to doing with these little radios. On this side, we've got a button for the flashlight, but lo and behold, there's no flashlight. And then programming key down here is programmable in the software or on the radio itself. So it gives you some control items here and some choices you can make. On the back here, we have the battery. There are the screws for the belt clip. Here's the USB. C input to the battery plus the little LED charging icon and then note that the battery screws onto the back to give it some security and a nice tight seal. Over here we've got the K connector and they're buried here underneath this little covering. And then on the top we've got the SMA for the antenna. The antenna has the socket side on the antenna and the plug side is here on the radio on-off volume, and then this little clear plastic covering that is where the flashlight is on many of these radios. That's where the GPS receiver is. And then, of course, the little send and receive LED light right there. And then across the back is a little loop where you can put the wrist strap that I showed you a second ago. Now, let's do a quick power on tour and look at the menu system. So let's turn the radio on, and I'm going to kind of tip the speaker toward my microphone here because you're going to find that there's a different voice so it'll go out of frame here but i'll turn it on channel mode and so you hear we have the male voice that's the same voice that's in my uv17 from baofeng and the screen and the fonts are the same so i suspect that this radio shares some dna with uh, that series of radios but it's a gmrs radio physical differences that I've already pointed out, like the P1 and P2 buttons certainly make this a different radio. So on our screen, let's point out a couple of things. It's got the usual icons. And so it's dual band, the little GPS red icon right there, the battery indicator. It says zone 01 right there and zone 01 dot here. So the radios can be programmed in channels. Uh, with various zones, which makes scanning and selecting the area that you want to work in much easier. So if you like to go camping or if you have a, a business in another city and you like to bring your radios with you, you could program the, the local uh, channels and various CTCSS codes for the GMRS community in that other city here into a zone and make it just easier to deal with. This one has the frequency set up for a repeater, it's channel 30. You can see it's got a little red 30 right there. There's a plus, which means it's a positive offset. The power is high on both of these. Uh, and then we can use P2 with a short press to go from A to B. And so this case now, the GMRS 18 is our main band. And you can see it's got uh, a little bit brighter. It was kind of a, a gray before, and now it's bright white. And unfortunately, the fonts for the names are not as big as the fonts for the uh, frequencies, but it is what it is. Now, if we want to change channels here, we can just use the button here. Note that here it says 18, which is where that channel is. If I press the button, 17. it announces the channel and the little number changes. And I've gone into the CPS 
and added the names. The names weren't in there originally, so I just was not very original. I just labeled each one with GMRS and number that corresponded. So 17s, GMRS 17. Again, we're in zone one and we're in dual mode. P1, mode. we'll change it to the frequency mode. And then a long press on P2 will take us into the GPS role. In this case, it's searching. I'm inside, so I'm not expecting it to find anything. And then a short press on exit takes us out of that mode. And so besides changing the modes here, a long press on P1 uh, displays the voltage. And then the menu will take us into the menu mode. And the menus here are a little bit different. It's not, you know, 50 or 55 menu items all strung together, but they're categorized. So let's take a look at that. And so here we've got uh, the banks. If I go into that, you can see zone one and zone two. I added zone two when I was in the CPS. So otherwise you'll just show whatever zones have channels assigned to them. We go down to scan. We can go here, and so we can scan a frequency range, what the mode is. We can subcode scan, which is the CTCSS scanning that you find on many of these radios. We can go down to our radio settings, which gives us all of the usual things. So step and squelch and power and all of that kind of stuff is located here, which is handy to have it all in one place. We go down to GNSS. That's where we can turn on the GPS, pick the mode of GPS we're using, set our time zone in GPS mode. All of that's pretty important and that's in that menu. When we go down a little bit further, we get to the program channel memory and that's a really handy one because instead of chasing down menu items across a large range, here we can go to program a channel and do all of that with consecutive menu items. and add a name, receive and transmit frequency, power, bandwidth, add our CTC or DCS codes. Uh, encryption doesn't work or is not allowed here in the United States. We can go into uh, signaling and then we can set the signaling tone that's associated with that particular radio. And we'll get back out of here. And then we can go down into our radio info press there and it just tells us the firmware and hardware version numbers. And then it, what's also important, it tells us what our radio uh, ID is. And so in this case, the radio is on ID 100, which is going to become important for us if we're using that GPS location function that the radio has. I really like these menus. Several of the radios that I've gotten recently from branded differently have this menu system that's divided by function and then has submenus for the various aspects of those things. A question that often comes up is, what can I expect for power output? Let's take a look. So here we've got the GM30 Plus hooked up to my MFJ874. It's broadcasting into a dummy load. It's 5 volt radio, so we have the, the setting or range set to 5 and the function to forward, which is the same as the power output. We're going to be reading this on the bottom arc. So here we go on GMRS channel 4. It comes in right at 3 watts. So that's pretty typical for radios that are advertised as 5 watt radios. Anywhere from 3 to 4 is what you can expect. And so uh, that's, one, that's what this one reads. Now here we have the radio set into the repeater range. So it's up on repeater 15. And so it'll be outputting at 467 in this case. So let's take a look and see what we get here on high power. And it's a little bit less, 2.8, 2.9. So that's not unusual again for these little radios, having just a hair less power up in the 467 range. Here's an audio clip. I'll be transmitting from one GM30 Plus to the other, so you can get a sense of both the transmit and receive audio. Test, 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 one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, GM30 Plus, transmit and receive test. Test out. When I was out playing with the GPS, I happened to have a local air traffic control tower selected. I was surprised at how clear both the tower and the airborne pilot sounded.
Many of my small airband capable budget HTs aren't even able to receive from my back patio, so I was pleasantly surprised. Now, let's do a quick snapshot of the factory CPS available as a free download on the Radioddity website. So here's a quick snapshot of the GM30 Plus CPS, and it works pretty much like all the factory CPSs do. Up here we have the typical Windows drop-down menus. As with many of these, it's got an import picture tool, which is kind of cool. It gives you a splash screen for your radio screen. Uh, settings, we're going to start as we always do with the COM ports. I've looked at my device manager and I know that the programming cable I'm using is on COM3. I can read and write from the radio. And then here are the various windows that has information that I'm going to be able to do. And here in file we can open, new, save, and save as, and so forth. Many of those same commands are listed here with icons in the second row. And this is the information that comes up when you open the program. So let's download from the radio. So the first thing we'll do is we'll read from the radio. We'll click start. See the radio turn to program. And the progress bar is marching across the screen. And we're all done. And the radio reboots. Here in this box, we can do the things that we're normally able to do. This version allows you to grow or to expand the window. And so you've got the frequency, receive CT, CSS, the transmit frequency, and then we've got the names over here. Now I have added these names. These were blank when it first came up. And so I've been into this particular radio before and made these changes. The other thing I've done is I've added a couple of repeaters down here in the, the channels that are eligible for you know adding repeaters. And so I, I added uh, 462725, which is the receive for the Shaw 725 repeater here in Phoenix. It doesn't have an output CCTS. Here is the frequency 467, the plus 5 megahertz offset. It does have an input CTCSS of 100. And then I've done these various things, added it to my scan list and so forth, and then labeled it. Here's another repeater. I've done the same thing. It's the Phoenix 650, 462, 6500 here. It's got inputs on both the input and the output. Uh, 123 on both. Here's the plus 5 offset for the transmit. I've added it to the scan and I've given it a name. So those are all things that are easy to do. I can add ham frequencies, I can add MERS frequencies, all kinds of things you can choose to add in here. Now the next thing I want to briefly point out is the VFO mode. This is where the VFO mode channels are going to start. You can set whatever you want in the radio so this one isn't terribly important in the radio functions you have all the menu items and so the squelch, timeout timers, power save modes, alarms, all of the things that you normally find. The backlight timer I've got set to stay on all the time while I've been recording and all of these things are available here. I've got my GPS on and so forth and so these are the things that you can make changes to in my channel A display I'm going to have it come up as a name and my work mode is going to be channel and then in, sh in my B display that B register the display type I've changed I'm going to have it come up in channel mode but I'm going to have it show the frequency instead so those are all the various things that I can make changes to here now with the changes made that I want I'm just going to go up into file and I'm going to go to save as. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to save it someplace that makes sense to me. I put mine online in my Microsoft OneDrive so I can access it from anywhere. And then at this point then, I'm going to go up and hit the right button and press start. You can see it programs this time. It's receiving so the little green light on the top shows green instead of red when it's sending. It's finished. It's rebooted. And so now all the information that I made changes to is back here on the radio. I'll then hit cancel and I'm done. And so that's our quick snapshot of the CPS. In this last clip, we'll take a look at one of the radio's cool features. So let's demonstrate the frequency copy here on this radio. And I'm using another brand of radio just to show you that you don't have to have 
uh, the same model or the same brand for this to work. So I'm going to be transmitting on a UHF frequency on this HA1G. And, and to do that, I'm going to, the way my radio is set up, I'm going to do a short press on the lower side key. And that tells me that it's search. And so it's looking in the UHF range, it says up there. So I'm going to take this radio and kind of hold it at arm's length and then transmit and see what we get. And so here it comes up with 467, 725. And as you can see, I've got this one at the 725 uh, repeater. And then it's got a CTCSS code of 100. And so that UHF search works pretty well. That would allow you to, you know, sync a frequency with uh, somebody else in your group if they've got codes on their radio and that kind of thing. So that single button search is kind of a handy thing to have. So there you have it. Hopefully this has been enough to give you a good idea of what you can expect from the GM30+. Plus. I haven't played with the GPS much yet, but plan on doing a follow-up video showing how that works. I have set it to receive GPS satellites and the radio took a couple of minutes to lock on and did display my GPS coordinates. Here are a couple of takeaways I have from using the radio for a bit. First, the color screen is very nice, but as with most screens of this type, you'll need to shade them if you're in bright sunlight. Color screens just aren't powerful enough to overpower the sun. Next, the overall feature set of this radio rivals much more expensive radios, which makes this a pretty good value. The dual pack with the extra antennas and programming cable makes these radios especially inexpensive. Similar antennas and cables on Radioddity's website are about $10 each. When subtracting that $30 from the $70 total price, the radios come in at only about $20 each. I know that chirp programming is important to many of you. Unfortunately, this radio is not yet supported by Chirp. Next, I haven't had these for too long, so I can't comment on overall longevity. They have a solid feel about them and appear to be well built. I hope you'll consider becoming a channel member. Click the join button below the video to learn more about that program. Join me over here for a recent video where we'll discuss what you're agreeing to when you get your GMRS license. Thanks for watching.